A long time ago in a galaxy almost far, far away, four makers unite in order to share and discuss their maker knowledge and some interesting topics along the way. Join us as we light the spark that brings back your childhood in the almost Star Wars <laughs> show. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Almost Star Wars show. I'm Ryan, better known as CG Artist, and I'm joined by Dennis with the Black Market Outpost, Brian from the Smugglers Room, and I'm James from the Rebel Base Build. So in this episode, we are going to talk about preparations for cosplay for going to Star Wars Celebration. You're all going, but, but yeah. I'm not. Oh, okay. well, I'm, and, I, and, and, and comic conventions. I see how yeah. it is. We, okay, we, should yeah, yeah, print, yeah. we should print like a small version of James on translucent paper in blue, and we just carry him around like a hologram. Yeah, you know, yeah exactly. You know you have to do that now. <laughs> or a little James right here, maybe on the shoulder. Yeah, on the shoulder. Him there. <laughs> we just trade off. Out of all of us, James is the only one who's actually done cosplay. Yes, and actually yeah, gone to a show. At a con. So yeah, so go ahead and start us off and uh, tell oh. us who, what you win as and how did it all go? Okay, cool. So unsurprisingly, it wasn't a Star Wars cosplay. Um, it was back in 2019, I think. Yeah, 2019. And it was in the midst of Avengers Marvel fever. And I'm a big fan of that as well. Love, love that stuff. And um, I'm a bit of a fanboy of Tony Stark. <laughs> that guy's cool, right? Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. He's cool. I sure. mean, what's not to like, you know? Uh, and I remember they, they were my favorite movies within the, the Avengers, and he was my favorite character. And I thought, yeah, I want to be just like him. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, we arranged to go to Comic-Con, and I've been to loads of Comic-Cons before. Uh, but just as a, you know, like as a, as a viewer, as a visitor, no, 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 never yeah. dressed up or anything. And I went twice in one year in 2019. I went to, I went in May, uh, which is actually runs along the same time as uh, Celebration, actually. It's on again next weekend. And I thought I'll do something simple because I've never done cosplay before. Built, built props, of course, but, but never cosplay. So I thought I would just go with the Tony Stark look, which I know I look nothing like Robert Downey, but I kind of copied the beard thing. Um, and I just went with the arc reactor and a suit and white trainers kind of just nice. went with something simple, quick and easy. And I actually made the arc reactor myself. There were kits you can buy that are really good, but I made it. I think I used um, hot glue uh, in, in like a ring that I made out of bendy plastic. And then I wrapped it with coil and, it, you know, it was uh, it, it wasn't the best. When I got there, I was blown away by the fact that people were like, hey, Tony. I was like, yes, <laughs> this is cool. I'm Tony. I am Iron Man. So I thought, right, I'm going to go one step further. In fact, actually, I made the, I made the glove as well. So it wasn't just the arc reactor. It was the, the one hand. You know, there's, I think in one of the films, he wears just yeah. a glove, just a hand. Yeah. So yeah. I made, made that too. And of course, I made it out of foam. Uh, this is before I even owned a 3D printer, before I really got into the props uh, like I do now. Uh, and I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And um, family came with me. Uh, Natalie, my, my missus, she was wearing, you know, like geek T-shirts and my little, my little lad was running around giving out uh, JC3D cards. Nice. And then I got the, I really got the urge to just go bigger. So I thought, right, the next Comic Con is October. So I gave myself from May to October to learn how to, first of all, uh, get the foam and build a full Iron Man Mark IV out of EVA foam <laughs> floor mats. Um, and it was absolutely awesome fun. I loved it. But the, the con crunch was just crazy because I'd run out of time. I was literally painting the thing the, the night before and hoping it was dry by the time oh, I, I put the, ask. <laughs> the, the, the shoulder bits. And uh, I've got, I mean, it's obviously a few years old now, but I've got the, this is, this is foam um yeah. with light up eyes and you know it's you can see inside it's all kind of did you what did you how did you get the the plant is it like pepacura that you use for the like yeah, how did so, you okay yeah i actually i downloaded um plans for it as well because you know what why reinvent the wheel there's this amazing right. dude and right. I, I really i forget the name but we'll make sure we put his link up over the video uh, on etsy and i downloaded the plans okay and i enlarged them since i'm six foot three and you know kind of 
bit a bit of a chunky guy. Um, and so I printed it out on the poster settings, just on paper, and then mm. transferred that over on. And at the time, it was EVA foam mats. It wasn't even reams of high density foam oh, like I use, yeah. like I've been using. It was just floor mats. I was so okay. green and new to it all. Um, but that was the fun thing. Um, there are videos on my YouTube channel before the Rebel Base Build series, where you know before I really cared about making it look good on video. It was just chuck all the videos in there, the pictures, and chuck a bit of music over the top and upload it <laughs> yeah. so, so that's what i did um so it's quite fun if you look at it it's a, it's a really kind of un unpolished version of of um of rebel base build i guess just sort of building marvel stuff nice. but i'll tell you what when i went there it was hot for the uk it was hot I was just gonna ask you that yeah how hot oh, was this? man it, um, and natalie was brilliant you know she i couldn't have got it on and off on my own because it's ridiculous and it, it's really hard <laughs> to move in it as well um it's light but hot um, mm. so the next to like the main showrooms is there is all, all conventions. There's like a, a, a dress area where you, you know, you can get all your stuff, get all your stuff on. And, uh, obviously we drove down cause I don't live too far away from London. It's just on the outskirts. So we drove in, uh, in civvies, uh, and then had uh, the Ironman kit in the boot <laughs> and in the car park, <laughs> we were pulling this out, like, uh, you know, chest pieces and helmets and shoulders and all this kind of stuff. And it was people were like, Oh my God, what's going on here? And then I put the legs on and I walked in with the legs on <laughs> and then put the rest on when we got in there. And I was blown away, absolutely blown away by the reception because people, mm. I wore it for four hours nonstop, which doesn't sound like a long time, but let me tell you, it was a long time. It was hot. It was uncomfortable. Yeah, It was so much fun. You know, people coming up and little kids smiling and take, you know, wanting, wanting their picture taken with you and just, mm -hmm. oh, it was, it was, it was brilliant. It was mind blowing experience, and then and then COVID happened, so I, I didn't get to yeah. do it again, and uh, I didn't get my finger out for this one. So there's nothing for this one. I'm just going to go and take yeah. part in in it. But yeah, it, it was great. It was great. But the, the con crunch bit is Man, the hardest get, part. You got to imagine that thing being made all out of foam. It's insulation. <laughs> four or five yeah. hours of that thing on. Yeah. Wow. Oh man. Yeah. And Over and here. you know this um. This doesn't it doesn't open properly, like you know, it's some really right, awesome right. versions of this. You can 3D print. I mean, look at uh, that. There's there's no way I would have guessed that that was foam. Look at it. Right? Yeah, I mean right? I was, it's I was, like I seamless. Kind of, I was kind of happy with how that came out. I mean, it, I was I was actually blown away myself. You could get that kind of uh result with foam, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, it, yeah. and this is this is flexi paint, um, which they, they used to sponsor my channel back in the early days when I did a lot of foam work. And they I mean this was still obviously um chat and things and when i do foam uh foam props i'm sure they'll jump back on again but you know th their paint range is awesome for this because it's flexible right. and also it looks like automotive paint when it's finished yeah so great yeah, that's foam. a lot of shine that you have on that for sure yeah yeah, yeah. And, it, and it looked really good under the lights in in the in the you know in the um the showroom it was in, it was really right, right. really cool but yeah the heat man honestly god <laughs> i kept taking the helmet off because i didn't have the lift up lid yeah. so i literally you had little fans in there, there. Little oh, tiny whisper it, yeah. fans. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a picture of of me with my, my well, there's loads of pictures of me and my little boy because he he dressed up as uh Phasma or or, or Chrome Trooper. And uh yeah. he um, and there was actually obviously as always lots of Star Wars um stands there and I think the I think the five oh first were there and things and uh there was a really great stand that was uh like a Kenner blister pack that you could stand in and it was uh, the yeah. the red the red guards from the last yeah. Jedi. And yeah. I stood in that, obviously, with my red suit on. What's that? <laughs> it was quite, it was good fun. Really so, great. So fun. you made a crossover, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Without nice. knowing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Cool. Dennis, I know you're working on a, uh, a, a new costume yeah, for. So, uh, I don't know. I think I bit off a little more than I can chew. I've got like two things going <laughs> at once here. Right. But yeah, like, so my first con experience was actually with Ron last year. We went back in October. Yep. And uh, like James was saying, it was weird. Like I got there a little bit before Ron and there was just loads of people in the parking lot putting on all kinds of stuff, <laughs> foam hats and wigs. And I mean, like full outfits. It was interesting when you get inside, like James was saying how they all have like a following. Yeah. Kids are like, I mean, kids are kids, right? They want they want their picture with Spider-Man. They don't know what's going on inside there or who's in there or any of that stuff. Yeah. But so, yeah, I, I well, for celebration, initially, I was just going to do something a little quick and simple, 
like a smuggler's type outfit. And that got out of hand, of course. I started adding <laughs> leather this, and I started having to teach myself how to sew. And one thing led to another, and here we are with, what do we got, about six or seven days to go? And yep, yep. about three quarters of the way done with two different costumes. <laughs> yeah, see, the crunch is on. People, the crunch is a real thing. Now, did you buy the sewing machine just for this project? So I did not buy it. I actually took one from my mom. <laughs> hey, even better. Theft yeah. is... Totally yeah. approved. When it comes My mom to actually had more than one, so I took one from her. There you go. And, you know, a couple of quick lessons here and there from her, and I managed to get by okay. That nice. Must nice. Been, that must have been nice, getting lessons from, you, from your mom as a, as a yeah, full, right? full grown adult yeah. on how to sew. Learning how to sew. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just weird. Like, you're in the middle of building this costume, right? And then you don't really know what you're doing. I've never done a costume, so it's not like I, you know, I had a ballpark idea of what i wanted it to look like or what direction i was heading in with it and i didn't i didn't necessarily want it to be a specific character either sure more or less like you know inspired by type thing right definitely so yes. i went with a my initial costume that i first started is like a smuggler type gambler han solo-esque type costume yeah mm -hmm. and i did the vest and the boots and you know i Talked to Brian a million times about airbrushing clothes, which is another thing I've never, ever done, you know, <laughs> using the airbrush to make things, you know, to grunge up the seams and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. It just it spirals because once you figure out, oh, I can airbrush this. OK, well, now I can do this, this and this as well, because I pulled it off on that. So I should be able to take yeah. it another step further, another step further. And here we are, you know, like I said, with seven days to go and two costumes that are a little over three quarters of the way done. <laughs> That's super overzealous there. Two costumes, then, not just one. <laughs> I'll tell you how the second one came about. I, I joined a couple of Facebook pages like we all do to get, you know, get ideas and people mm -hmm. out there, they've done it. You know, you can get tips, you can get pointers and you pick up and do what they're doing. Somebody had mentioned something about Bodie Rook. Mm -hmm. so i was like oh yeah. man that's probably a pretty quick and easy one to do so i started looking into it and <laughs> the thing about that costume is everything about that costume was initially store bought right mm -hmm. everything nice. he's wearing is available yeah on the internet or store or whatever yeah but it's not as easily available as i thought it would be <laughs> i mean i still ended up having to dye a lot of stuff and it's another thing i've never done i've never dyed clothing or anything like that I had this crazy contraption in the backyard, a tub full of brown dye, and I'm in there soaking clothes and stuff. And all the neighbors are like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> then, <laughs> so I've got, you know, younger kids. We have a swing set back there. I hung them all on a swing set to dry overnight. So I had like all this entire costume hanging on a swing set, dripping all over the grass to dry. <laughs> Nice. Because I was teaching myself how to dye clothes. Oh, man. Uh, so you like, really, really leaned into discomfort there. I mean, you I, did some stuff you hadn't oh, done. Oh, yeah. Before, There's right? no doubt. There's no mm -hmm. doubt. I mean, the only, I can tell you right now about the only thing I was comfortable doing on this thing was the machining of the Greeblies. <laughs> anything else? <laughs> anything else was like, oh, I got to shorten that vest. How do I do that? I got to add a piece of leather on this cloth. How do I do that? And it was yeah. just one thing after another. And I'm like thinking to myself, you know, it's cosplay. So you can use hot glue. You can do things like that. Think Still, of all the skills you acquired, Dennis, going through all right. that. I know like right? all the different things you've learned that now you'll be able to use on something entirely different down yeah. the road. Mm -hmm. That's just awesome. It's, including yeah. sewing and you've, you've signed up to that. yeah you've signed up to a bunch of facebook sewing groups right so are you going to yeah, spam I, them I, as well totally. with, <laughs> you're going to spam them afterwards with your with your cosplay yeah and there'll exactly. be you know there'll, there'll be people in there ready to go find a nice you know sort of sewing pattern to make a nice set of clothes and it's wait a funny, minute like, I, was, I, I was looking up a few things on youtube right sewing wise and mm. i made sure that it was all guys that i was watching <laughs> yeah why right why yeah, yeah why Girls work different, man. I mean, for watching a guy, they're a little bit more clumsy. They're a little bit more not as you wanted the clumsy version yeah, not of as sewing. finesse, right? With the sewing <laughs> machines, with this, with that. So 
<laughs> I <laughs> wanted something the, more I thought we were speed. going down the whole feminist path and all no, that. And no, it was no, just, no, I need not, someone no, that looks this, like this, they have no idea what they're I doing. I needed something more <laughs> my speed so I would be confident and comfortable. <laughs> One sleeve longer than the other because that's yeah. how guys roll, you know. Right, it's okay. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> the sheer oh, fact that you've me. done it. And shared it with everybody is is breaking stereotypes. Yeah. So well done, man! It's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Sweet yep. dude. Sweet <laughs> man. Brian, I know you just came out with a video today about. Uh, actually, you've had a, several videos with you. You guys costume you and Clarissa. Yeah, we, I I don't know what I got us into, man. <laughs> I mean, we, so celebration was supposed to be two years ago, right? Right. So we got a two year extension. So what do you do with an extension? You wait Whoa. until the last month before you got to go of before course. you finish it. Believe and me. that's what we've done to ourselves. And um, I was just talking to Carissa before we started this. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to make a long story out of this, but we don't have AC in the house just yet. And it's 90 degrees today. And she's in there on the sewing machine and you can just see the rage in her. She's just, <laughs> on, she's on that last stretch. I'm like, you okay, hon? And she's like, no, I'm not. It's hot in here. And this isn't cooperating. And I was like, wow, hmm. I wish I wouldn't have asked that question because I'm terrified now. Yep, back away slowly. <laughs> yeah, she's in the con crunch because the days are counting down. And that sweet woman built all of my stuff first. And now hmm. she's trying to finish hers. But it's an amazing amount of work. And I got I to gotta say, like, I've made some armor and stuff and I've painted. But she's done all of it. Like, she's hmm. sewing leather belts and six different layers of shirts and clothing and pants. And it's, it's incredible. The stuff that she's been able to do is incredible. Yeah. And it's a lot of it is her talent, but also like the community itself. And I think that's what I'm really drawn to. I, I have never done cosplay ever. Uh, Halloween's a big thing for us. We always dressed up as Halloween and she always made costumes for that, but never did, never did this. And we said when we were at last celebration, that we would do Mandalorian kits. I learned that kit is actually what you refer to as the costume. Wow. And uh, yeah, we've, we've gone into the lore of all of it. And I, I'm just super pumped, man. The way she's put all this stuff together is insane. The costume she made for me, the, the, they call it the soft goods, right? This, all the fabric material mm. yeah. is I could wear that with a Jedi robe, and it would work perfectly. I can slap the armor on and I'm and the helmet and it'll work as a Mando. She just, she had a way of designing all that stuff that, that looks great. And just like Dennis, we decided, well, building two full blown Mandalorian costumes in a month and a half left to go wasn't enough. We should then do something else. So we decided that droid mechanics just like dennis thought with the rogue one with Bodhi, would be easy i was like oh we could do a droid mechanic costume and do it in like a day no that's not that's not the case so i've got two weird mannequins that we bought on amazon that are staring at me right now which is also <laughs> making me uncomfortable and they're super skinny so the belt that i've got around the male mannequin is cinched to its last stitch and i use the first one but it's super crazy to see them because now it looks like Two two droid mechanics that you'd find in most Eisley. Yeah. And my wife did some really cool stuff with stencils with the cricket that we ironed on. And we bought some patches from a from a maker on Etsy with our names. And then we took James's um the the Greebleys that you put on your Falcon bench. Thanks, and man. I printed those out and she made patches that they sew to the arms. And then I wired up some rgb leds that that run and then we bought like a home depot belt and a whole bunch of pouches and we're connecting droid collars and all kinds of random crap up to it and they look really good and to top it all off chris made a custom most icely astromech repair uh logo for the for the patch on the back and uh yeah so but the crunch is on there's there's so much left to do and I'm sure we'll be doing just like James. We'll be painting up to the last second as we board on the plane. And so now to get all that stuff out there, uh, what are you? What are your plans on that? Uh, Jawas. We hired like twelve of them. They're gonna, they're they're gonna, you know, take it for. I have two um, huge Pelican cases mm -hmm. that I used to use to take audio video mm -hmm. equipment on tour to to dealers, uh, my clients and stuff, and and test. And they're massive. So 
I'm also going to paint those so they look in universe. I don't know when I'm going to do that. I really love it when when cosplayers do that. You know, when yeah. they they want to store their kits in something that is still in universe. It's just right? great. It's like yeah, like the, it's like an extension of the project, isn't it? How how we get into yeah. this stuff. You make the suit, but then you want to carry it in a box that looks proper yep. and. You know, it's great. It's, it's, it's just play. It's just playing, but as adults, right? It's great. And I want it to get weathered when the guys from the airport are tossing that thing around, right? And it's getting banged up in the plane. <laughs> right, yeah. And I, I'd love to be able to see their face when they, <laughs> when a big white case rolls out with the smuggler's room across the front of it <laughs> and Arabish all stenciled on there. Yeah, I want to see their right. face. My wife was saying the same thing. She's like, where do you think you're going to put all this stuff to <laughs> get it over there? I was like, right. I'm not sure about that part yet. We, I gotta we don't finish. think that far ahead. I got to finish them before I'm worried about how I get them there. No point yeah. taking them if they're not done. Uh, you know, I, I had zero uh, thought for, for the storage or, or even how to get it there because in my head it's it's 20 minute drive and I'm thinking, ah, yeah, you know, it's foam, it's flexible, ram it in the boot, and that really <laughs> wasn't wasn't the the best idea. So, mm. so we, it was in bin bags and stuff. But then I always thought the next step would be to make like a stark you know, flight case and get it all in there. Yeah. That, that never, that never yeah. happened. But it would be cool to do that, but I'm definitely going to be doing Star Wars. So it's funny, like you don't think about those things, right? But most of us are going to fly there, right? Yeah. This thing's mm. all covered in aluminum and all kinds of set things that are going to set off metal detectors. So yep. it's not something you can carry on or yeah. any. I mean, it's literally or your be, blaster that you yeah, put in the case away somehow. Well, you could yep. wear the helmet. You could. Good. I'm walking with the blast. No, that's not good. That's not a good idea. <laughs> no, we're going to carry our idea. Mando helmets with us on the flight. Yeah. I'm not yeah, putting I'm them looking. in the case. So we're just going to carry them. Right. I was that thinking was back it. to to Star, Star Wars cosplay. The only thing I've done really, really Star Wars cosplay was the bag. I, I forgot to say, you know, I did. I did uh, the, yes. Uh, oh, yeah, I you did. did. The bag. And, mm-hmm. I, you know, like, like you yeah. guys, I, I had no, I think I said it in the beginning of the video. I had no idea what the hell I was doing. Uh, you know, weathering stuff. I mean, even now I look at it and I, I, I actually laugh out loud when I watch the scene where I've got that heavy rock music going and I'm there with my burnt umber, <laughs> burnt umber paint just painting in a bag with a brush. <laughs> and but I'm it thinking, turned yeah, out so good, man. I, I mean, no that's idea what I was doing. And the yeah. one of my favorites that you've done. I mean, I mean that that was one of my nerve. That was one of my most nervous steps, man. I think I talked to Brian a week before I actually brought up the nerve to spray it or anything. Mm. I mean, I spent you know a couple of good three four five days building this thing now i'm supposed to just spray paint all over it <laughs> yeah and hope yep. that it looks right and there's no coming back from that right i no. mean once you start airbrushing no. there's no snacks. yeah i bought i bought fuller's earth um a few different types actually yeah. so adam savage had done uh a, a, oh man it's an incredibly great costume build for these spacesuits he built yeah. for g4 yeah yeah <clears throat> and he talked about using the the Fuller's Earth that he got from the Manhattan Cosplay yes. Company. So I bought those exact uh, types. I bought a bunch of different ones. Right. And we used them on the droid mechanic costume, which was great. And they went on awesome. And it, it looked great. It was super dirty. It's supposed to be Tatooine. So I used the light color and tried to just right, hammer right. it. But I've got to do that on these unbelievably detailed costumes. Yeah. The Chris, Carissa has spent literally months over the last two years putting together and every time i say weather and she's all for weathering but Mm. every time i say it she gets that look in her face like oh (laughs) man what what is going to happen there i'm so terrified to do it it's nerve-wracking man i had a hard time bringing myself to do it that's one that's one step in the build where there's no going back no one step on there it's that's a done deal you yeah. feel the same. Feel the same with props, don't you? When you when you get to that stage and weather, weather. I or do, not, but I feel you know like you want to weather, but yeah. yeah. But I feel like with a prop, for example, let's say I don't like it, I can just primer the whole thing and start fresh. Yeah, you true. Can't, yeah. I can't primer yeah. the clothes. Mm. No, nope. that's like no, it's you're almost like over. you're you're locked yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're yeah. committed. That's it. And you're committed with no time yes. left to go before you go to the convention that you can't start over. You might as well just put on a t-shirt and say, I'm a fan. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Although uh, I, think, I think for the comic convention in August and October, the one in uh, Chicago and the one in, uh, in Michigan, I'm going to go to yep. that one again. I'm yeah. actually going to do my first cosplay uh, in, in both of those. So what are you going to do? Leaning on all three of you guys <laughs> to yeah. figure out how to, uh, how to not ruin it. Do you know so, what you want to do, Ron? 
Yeah, what are you doing? Well, something Empire, of course. You know, of course. So, yeah, uh, that was a stupid. <laughs> although I am going to go as a rebel, I, I I will go as an undercover uh, mm. agent, but I will dress up as a rebel. I I, I like how you guys. Uh, I like how Dennis has costume the uh, the mechanic or or the pilot and everything. I like yeah the jumpsuit sort of feel. So yeah. I, I yeah. might try yeah. something like that. Yeah, and I love those goggles, Dennis. Those goggles. Oh, yeah, yeah, those they, things. They are Gosh. just that's brilliant. They look great. Yeah. Yeah, tell me absolutely. about them. T- tell us about them. So I yeah. ordered those. They're, they're pretty basic weld goggles <clears throat> or uh, plasma cutting goggles is what they are. Fairly cheap on Amazon. They're about $13 or $14. But the, the premises is with the Bodhi Rook ones are two goggles put together. They're like the old science yeah. lab goggles we had when we were in school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they take the lenses out of these and put them together. But when I got those and I looked at them, I was like, I don't want to change this. I like everything about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, they flip up. So you got the clear lens and then you got the shaded lens that flips down over the top. See, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. So I was like, man, before I tear these apart, I'm just going to try to, you know, greedy them up and yeah. get them to look and see what they look before I just cut the lenses out to donate them to the basic, you know, science lab goggles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you have Once lights I... on them too, right? So, yeah, I found these little tiny, like, they're like reading lights from the dollar store. They have like a little clip on them that you would clip like to your book and then put the light down at it. Yeah. So I cut the clip off and I actually just screwed it right into the side of the goggles. The switch is right on it. So you just turn it on and off right from the <laughs> sticks out the side. You got some kind of antenna thing going on as well, haven't you? Yeah, that yeah. was a that's a turret from a tank. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> nice. It's brilliant. And then it works. I had, it works. I had a hard time weathering them because they're like a very uh the rubber, like it's injected that. rubber material, yeah. very flexible. Yeah. Nothing sticks to it. And and when you weather it with paint, it just looks like you spilled chocolate milk on it. It just <laughs> like nasty dip, right? James, didn't you yeah. suggest that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, hmm. I I've used it on many things. Yeah, and I'll it, tell you what I actually found out the the works, surface, isn't it? The yeah. uh the good old uh oil-based paints. Oh. Because yeah. you can, yeah. I mean, smear the crap out of them and then you Ooh. wipe it off, but it stains the rubber. Uh, oh, so the okay. residue stays and it actually soaks in. Yeah. But like with the acrylics and all the other stuff I would normally do, it just floated on top and it literally looked like I was spilling chocolate milk on there. I was like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> you, you can see the paintbrush swirls in it and all kinds of yeah. stuff. When I saw the image, I, and I know you did some nice photography on there too, but they, they yeah. just work straight away. Yeah, yeah, probably. yeah. Agreed. They look great. Yeah, the only the only issue I have with them, which I haven't figured out yet, and I guess I still have a few days to do that, is I can't wear them on the top of my head. They hurt so bad. Oh. Everything inside of them is so hard it digs into your head. What about wearing you, them around the neck area? Like well, that the, that's my option. I was thinking about putting yeah. maybe a longer lanyard so they'll hang down mm-hmm. a little bit lower and just wear them around the neck. Well, you yeah. could sew you could sew yourself a little head pillow to. No. Well, no, but I did think about gluing. Skills. I did think about Use taking skill, a piece baby. of uh, EVA foam and just filling the hole inside, but then they wouldn't be wearable. It'd be more mm. like a headband than anything else. Oh, you could yeah. also have them hanging on, like onto your belt area too. Yep. Yeah, yep. on the side yep. of your leg there. Yeah. So that vest has a ton of pouches on it too. So I mean, there's plenty mm-hmm. of options. Clip it on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just got to figure out what route I want to take. I'm excited to see the final. But, yeah, it's going to be nice to see that. I was thinking, guys, um, sort of keeping with the cosplay thing, I wonder how much so, – so there's, I, I would imagine there's probably two – I don't know a huge amount about cosplay, if I'm honest, but I imagine there's probably a couple of different approaches. There's those that want to go all out on the creation of it and, and making it look you know, super authentic yeah. or, or inspired by it. And then there's those that want to then inhabit it as well and, and become that – like a, you know, you see, you see cosplayers hanging around looking cool, and waving yeah. at kids and all that kind of stuff. Right. And then you see cosplayers that are completely in role, you know, and they're, and they're walking around yep. and they're like, "Yeah, I am this character. This is me." Yeah, yeah. And I, I always think that's cool. You know, I tried a bit of that with Iron Man, but uh, you know, right. I'm, I'm not. It's funny. There's like, there's different levels. Like, I mean, obviously, as we're doing research for all this stuff, you find that there's different levels of cosplay. Right? There's this whole group out there that call themselves bounding. And they do like the Disney things. And oh, uh, yeah, I've seen that. They dress in like Star Wars attire, but they're just themselves, right? They just mm. look the part, but there's rules to it because Disney won't allow you to, you know, dress exactly like a character. 
So they'll take I, I modern clothes edge. and and spin it, and it's just amazing what they do with like everyday off the rack stuff. Hmm. Wow! And then there's like the hardcore people, like James is saying, where they live and breathe the character, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, everything is perfectly specs to how it was in the movie and all that stuff. My brother-in-law, he, we we would. There's a thing called a zombie crawl in Denver, where I live. Mm-hmm. So every October they'll have a zombie crawl and. I mean, you're talking tens of thousands of zombies that right. just walk the streets. A lot of people will get dressed up. They just go out. They have a good time. You have a few drinks, whatever. And my brother-in-law, when he gets in a costume, he is whoever that is. Mm-hmm. And this one year for zombie crawl, he had a, uh, he went as a skier that had a ski pole sticking out of his chest <laughs> and he would get stuck on stuff with that ski pole. Nice. And he'd bang into it until somebody went and moved him so he could start walking again. And I'm <laughs> telling you, that man will stay in that character right, until right. someone affects him. Yeah. So they're down. My my sister and my brother in law, they're down here a couple weeks and weekends ago. We're working in the shop. They wanted to work on their own cosplay for Star Wars Celebration, and he's he's getting into his droid mechanic. He's developing an accent. He's developing hmm. who that character is. And all of us are sitting around that night at dinner and thinking he's going to be this guy from the minute he shows up on that floor until he leaves. I can promise you he will be whoever that guy is. Right. And I think that speaks awesome. to what James is asking. I, I don't know if I can go the distance there. Yeah, and I, he I, will. I, mm. I agree. I think I'd be the more, you know, I'll do the costume, but I'll be still think I'll be myself. You're just mm. still Dennis, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it's something that comes with time after after doing it a few times, you know. Um, yeah, like it, when you go to a Comic Con and you run into somebody that is straight up that character, it's interesting. The last celebration we were at, there was somebody in uh, it was one in Chicago, and there was somebody in an Emperor's getup, and I mean it was excellent cosplay as far as the look, right. and that guy had the voice down, and we saw him for days, and he never altered who he was. It didn't mm. matter whether he was ordering a soda at the convenience thing or yeah. talking to somebody that was just a fan. And it just, it immersed you into that character and it was mm. stunning to watch. Yeah. Mm. Well, especially Amazing if he's stuff. ordering food, I would have, I, I probably would have recorded that. That's funny. I, yeah. I think I I'll try to find it. I don't know if I can, but at, at the Chicago one, he was, he was like, funny. give me a Coke, you know? And he's like, mm. it just, it was all in character. It was crazy. Yeah. Pretty useful when your chips get cold. <laughs> hey, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Popcorn, right you know. <laughs> hey, James, since you've gone and done it, do you ever get annoyed with the amount of people who want to take pictures with you? Oh, that's a good question, that one, Ron. Annoyed? Uh, not so much annoyed because, you know, you've kind of put yourself out there to do it. And, uh, I mean, particularly with Iron Man, I'm walking around in a bright red, shiny Iron Man um yeah. get up and you know avengers was at the height of its sort of popularity all the rest of it so it was kind of going to happen I, I just got worn out you know it was yeah. great I, honestly it was such a high that day it, it was just fabulous and and i uh, found myself you know as you do sort of checking insta and seeing where well loads of pictures were taken well you know anybody shared it <laughs> mm-hmm. um and there honestly there were some amazing uh 3d printed iron men walking around there i mean mine, mm-hmm. mine was just mine was just like a, it was probably an accessible to people because they once they get up close you can you can tell it's you can tell it's foam once you get up close and mm-hmm. it kind of makes it and then the question the conversations were good because you know i took took the helmet off people were asking about how i built it and then you can see in their eyes especially the guys they were wanting to hmm so these are floor mats and this is some yeah. just some paint that you can do with a brush and mm-hmm. you can get I these can plans on etsy for 10 quid and, <laughs> and i'm like right yep yeah uh, so and that was a good thing whereas i think they see the other ones you know with all the mechanical heads and all and all that stuff as slightly maybe not as possible for everybody yeah. so so that mm-hmm. that was cool so i never got annoyed with it but it i i there was a time where i i was just getting one out and and nasty kind of gave me that look that they give you whereas enough is enough yep <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you, you need to drink some water you need to have something to eat and sit down yep. so yep. so i did that in the end you know when i got got changed but um yeah, I, I guess you probably could do. One thing did annoy me actually. Um, when, I, when remembering um, was being, being poked. People, people. Uh, I think it's a big thing, isn't it, about being invited to be yep. touched 
you know, at, yeah. at, at yeah, conventions. Yeah, yeah. And um, it, it was the younger kids, so it was, I wasn't, I was never going to get angry, you know, in any way. But it, it kind of irritated me slightly that maybe some of the parents could have maybe don't do that. Yeah, yep. You know, certainly my, I've got yep. a two-year-old and an eight-year-old, and I would have been saying, no, you know, don't do that. <laughs> so that happened. But yeah. I think that is a thing. I think that does happen. Uh, oh yeah, when we take time. the droids out, they do that. The kids do that all the mm. time. There's a lightsabers to start beating on it. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. something about those younger kids where they just it feels like they want to go up and just have some kind of physical interaction with whatever right, right. it is. And they'll go up yeah. to the droid and like grab hold of one of the eyes and or kind of shake it yeah. or whatever and you watch those no. parents and you're like, "Hey, your kids over here." <laughs> you get really upset and you're wondering like, "Why are they doing that?" It yeah. must be something that they don't understand. You think is that is that what you think it is? I don't have kids, so I have no idea. Yeah, I, well, I think it's just a, I think it's the excitement, isn't it? They see their like yeah. like you were saying earlier. They see their hero or, or the thing, and, and it's in the real world. It's in front of them. So of course they're going to want to embrace it. You know, yeah, yeah. excitement, and that, and that's curiosity. Why you, you have to be understanding. So that's when you do the smile through your teeth thing. Like, ah, oh, this is so <laughs> cute. <laughs> Which it is. It is cute, but yeah, it's, it's also it, it's just a, it's just a thing. It happens in cosplays. Yeah. Yeah, comes yeah. with the territory, I think. Yep, you're on your way to the bathroom, and they're like, "Can I get a picture?" Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, hurry up, gotta go get real wet around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I just, peed, not... I just peed in my suit. <laughs> not really, not really. <laughs> I mean, I'm not you, thrilled about mm. doing the bounty hunter, you know, the Mando costume without the it's helmet be on. All over you. Oh, without the helmet. Well, yeah, because you know, th- because of everything that's going on, that it's there's a mask mandate, so they're there's kind of this helmet thing where you can't wear it the whole time. You can put it on for photos and whatnot. Mm, And it's not about the mask for me. It really isn't. Mm. It's about Mm. these. When you see a Mando come up to you with glasses on, it's like, wait a minute. That's not right. Yeah. And I can't wear contacts because if you've ever, Mm. I tried to get contacts one time in my life. It didn't work out so well. I can't do that either. So I I was like, my head head dodges my contact. (laughs) <laughs> I actually looked into that mm-hmm. Star Wars and glasses, and there's quite a, there's more yeah. glasses in Star Wars than we actually realize. Yeah. What? No, really? okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm interested because I have the same Where? problem, Brian. I can't do contacts. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't. I mean, I can't really. Can I get around and probably be okay during the day? Yeah, sure. Yeah, but I won't mm-hmm. enjoy it because I, no. you know, I'm be like trying to. Yeah, because I'm like this all day. Like, yeah, hey, like, well, it's nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, <laughs> which well, one well, of well, the three well, of you is it? You know, even taking the glasses out of the equation, um, the, it was particularly with Iron Man, you got the little etched LED yeah. lights to look through, and, yeah. and you couldn't see a thing, you know. Uh, hmm. and, and I guess with, with the trooper helmets and stuff, you're limited. I always wondered how, they, yep. how why that's a good idea to, yeah. to you know, narrow your vision. As, no as wonder a they can't see anything that they shoot at, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's, exactly. it's weird because actually my, my workaround for this is that my safety glasses for work actually – resemble almost a hundred percent Hondo Onaka's glasses. Yeah. See, now nice. you're cheating, man, because you got prescription <laughs> safety yeah. glasses that so will I, be I, in universe. I was wondering if you could make, you could know, incorporate them into cosplay, like make them into like a, a type of goggles or something. They, that thanks, pretty Ron. Much, you know, now I'm going to spend the next resemble. 24 hours trying to make glasses and I don't have enough to be around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they I mean, like a, a frame over completely. the frame almost. And then I, the part the same comes thing, around, I was like, you know? cause I don't have a helmet, right? There's no helmet. There's yeah. nothing to hide it. So sure. it's like, well, and what, I can't I wear do? the helmet. This, this helmet here. Yeah. It doesn't but, fit with the glasses underneath. Yeah. I can't get it on. It's so perfectly made to my measurements right. when we gave it to the, to the company that made them. Yeah. I didn't think about the glasses. glasses. Mm. Yeah. Is that, <sighs> is that one you're going to actually wear? Yeah. Show? Yeah. So, so you this got one some is painting a, to do, huh? No doubt. I've got two wow. of them lined up here. This is the uh, fourth time through with the uh, filler primer on it. Mm, okay. Um, I've been sanding for days. <laughs> the worst and part I, of the helmets, man. Sanding. I hate more sand. sanding. It's coarse. Gets everywhere. Man, yeah. that joke never gets old. I have horrible memories of the helmet for four hours. <laughs> it's very <laughs> tight. But it was too late to re- remake it, you know? Right. So, right. But, um, yeah, it was. <laughs> You didn't, so with the foam, you don't have to do as much sanding, though. I mean, obviously, like a 3D print, right? But you still have some sanding and priming to do, right? I well, mean, is it a lot to, to get I the mean, paint on there and all? I didn't really do any sanding on it because if you if you cut 
if you stencil the patterns really, really carefully onto the foam and then you cut the patterns really, really carefully, and I did it all with a, with a really sharp craft knife. Mm-hmm. And then if you're really super careful when you put the, the contact cement on there and you offer them up, and if you, you know, really, really look at what you're doing when you're bringing the edges together, you can honestly get away with it without any any uh filling sanding nice. or filling at all sanding nice. kind of comes in when you want to take the pinch off of, off of a shape where you've joined two pieces together right. and then that depends on the plan because if the plan is you know two fairly large pieces that you're going to pinch together at an angle you're going to have a little pitch whereas if you've got smaller pieces that make the curve the pitches aren't as obvious in the joints gotcha. and then things like you know um uh Plasti dip also do a really good job in hiding any seams, but I think I think you'll find if you watch like the you know the the, the guys online, there's lots of really cut talented cosplayers and you know foam builders. They they all do take down those those joins with you know like a uh, Dremel, a, a, yeah, like a Dremel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. take take that yeah. down and things. So, but I didn't do much of that. I did a little bit on on the chest plate because I wanted that to be really smooth, one big piece. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, honestly, it, it's it's such a great. It's a great medium to work with. It's it, that's why mm-hmm. I've done so much of foam. It's, it's it's brilliant, and the fact that you can mold it and heat it and bend it. You know, you've done a lot of it as well, haven't you? Now, uh, Brian, with, with the, yeah. the things you've made. It's, yeah, it's and just you just great. said chest plate, which actually makes me really nervous. So, I realized that yesterday I I did a full mock up. I put <clears> everything on, and I held up my Mando chest plate. It's too small. It doesn't look <laughs> right. Uh oh. So. It's uh, Thursday evening, and uh, I'm going to make a new chest plate in two days. Foam. And you- it's going to be the only way, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you've given up some time to come and chat with us as well, and you've got all that to do. And, and we oh, appreciate that. You guys are priority number one. I mean, of course. But yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do it again. I'm keeping that one in reserve in case I don't finish. But I put yeah. it on. I'm like, oh, so when you're a chubby kid and you're broad... <laughs> You really can't have a tiny chest plate. It just looks ridiculous. <laughs> uh, it's funny how we all have like all of our issues are like similar. It's like so the jumpsuit, I ordered three sizes at the same time. <laughs> oh, to make sure you got all one on. And yeah, because yeah. I don't know. Like, what do I know about buying a jumpsuit? Right. <laughs> so I ordered a, you know, from large all the way up to double X or whatever. See, when you're a fat guy, you just order double X and you're done. Yeah, but the thing, I didn't want it to be baggy, so I wanted it to be a little more fitting, right? So I figured, yeah. do I go a half a size down? Do I go a full size down? I don't know how all this works. Right, because you don't want to put the legs on and then have to put the things on. Oh, oh, no, I'm stuck. Yeah. Guys, I had packages and packages of pants coming in and jumping. <laughs> what did your wife say? And- <laughs> but I want to know what your wife's reaction I'm sure she just was like. like- <laughs> she said, what are all, like, Every day for a week straight, pants were coming in the mail because I couldn't decide what I wanted, right? Do I want them in green? Do I want them in brown? Do I want them in this size? Do I want them in that size? Oh, man. So I think I ordered six pairs of pants. <laughs> wow. And then, like, here we can return Amazon stuff to Kohl's. So yep. I loaded everything nice. up and yep. took it back. And the lady at Kohl's is looking at me like, what are you doing? It was just all <laughs> pants and jumpsuits in a box going back. So, so just quickly then, guys, what do you think about – um? Uh, the accessories obviously accessories are as important as what you're wearing you know they are um, um, yeah yeah weapons and and bits and pieces you know like tools whatever you've yeah. uh, you've you've got that you're doing that as well aren't you yeah i mean the, the my wife made the holster which i consider an accessory right so there's hmm. there's this yeah. intricate leather holster that she's made individual leather pouches she's made um just all the little details. Yeah. She took a, it was a Mando, a Mandalorian, the TV show right. uh, pattern that someone had put up on Etsy, but it even had all the little bullet, uh, the shell casings Ouches, for yeah. his oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Huh. So we That's 3D cool. printed all of those. And yeah, there was a lot of effort put into just that. And then I put it on yesterday and I'm like, man, I feel, I feel like, I'm kind of awesome in this. Right. It's just <laughs> like, and it's those accessories, like you said. And I think, uh, uh, Dennis, some I was might have been Dennis for our um droid mechanics had suggested that the chalk dispensers yeah, the, that's what these guys oh, are. he's got them right there. Yeah, I we put them into our sleeves and my wife sewn the yeah. little things, little we put them in the sleeves. Yeah, I took the little white <laughs> tips off of mine. 
Yeah, I mean, and then your Greeblies, James, printing those and putting them on the patch, like, boom, it sold it. It just, you just, so you I might not be going away. to celebration, but at least my Greeblies are. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we printed. Uh, we printed these. These are all yours. These are these are James's design. Let's oh yeah, yeah. Oh, this there. Oh man, right? that's cool. So yeah, they're yeah. going on. They're going on the. Uh, we're hooking them on the belt, so we're gonna have a whole bunch of them because they look droid related, maybe. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, I think the accessories are king. Yeah, the accessories awesome. are like, I think it's the one part where you get carried away, right? Every time I did something, I was like, oh, so you add something on the right. Oh, now I need something on the left. Or yeah. you got it. Yeah. By the time you're done, I mean, just get all over the place. Greeblies. Then I did the old uh, Jason Jensen trick. I outlined this in a shoelace to hide the seams. So I got a question for the four of you. So let's say hypothetically. We end up in London, London. for a celebration. I mean, yeah. there's going to have to be some some cosplay between the four of us that all goes wow. together for the almost Star oh, Wars yeah. show, right? Oh yeah, the yeah. almost Star Wars cosplay. What is we what have, is it? We got to yeah. do that. I don't know. I have no idea what it would be. But we've got to do yeah. that. Star Wars yeah. version of the Ghostbusters. Yeah, that would be cool. Ooh, actually, I mean, that would be sweet, man. Yeah. It would be. We've had the bad batch. Maybe we could be the terrible batch. Yeah. <laughs> Or the even worse batch. Yeah. We're almost as bad. <laughs> I love it. Almost These as bad terrible batch. Yeah. bads. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we should, right? Down to the helmets and have some weird face paint or, or paint Dude. on the helmets and everything. I and we could have it. some really, really in depth. Do a helmet with Wilson on it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we could have some really in depth conversations about personalities and which of the bad batch we, we each think yeah. we are. Yeah. That would be, that would be fun. That would much, be yeah. fun. Actually. Much better. That'd be a good time. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That'd be cool. All right, guys. So that concludes this episode. Hey, if you're going to celebration, go ahead and put in the comments what you're going as, you know, so that way we can spot you and all and uh, say hi. Also, if you've got any tips or anything, put that down below as well. So thanks for joining us, and we will talk to you guys later. It's kind of cool that there's James has done it. Dennis and I are in the middle of it. And Ron, you're on the, you're, you're about I, to do I it. Will so do there's it. like three different mm. perspectives Tears. of this whole thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. And yeah, by the end of the year, we would have all have done it. I was doing everything <laughs> yeah. possible to find out if there's any kind of rules on that stuff, but I can't seem to find anything on what they allow or what they don't allow. Oh, I'll say, I can send you a link, like Other as than, far as accessories and weapons yeah. and all that kind of stuff. I'll yeah. send you a link. I, uh, I had to share that with somebody else today too. Okay. Do they um, still make you stick orange paint yes. on the end of the weapon? Yeah. yeah you have, uh, to, you have to have some kind of colored indicator. It doesn't have to be paint. It can be a sticker. Tape. It can be something tape. Yeah. Electrical tape. That's what I'll do. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. could probably get the um, the construction tape that has it's kind of a neon orange or neon yep. green. Yeah, yep. which you could that also around there. stick yeah. onto a real weapon. So what are we accomplishing? And, well, <laughs> yeah, so they, know, they right? make you hand them the weapon. So as when you go to get yeah. inspection, you got to hand it to them. Yeah. All right. And if it's made out of metal, like if it was a, a replica, even though it's non-firing, you won't be able to bring it. It has to be yeah, that, plastic, that's... cardboard, foam, something like that. That's what I was yeah. going with initially, and then I decided to scrap that, so I 3D yeah. printed one. Good call. Good call. Yeah. Yep.